Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash A-H-T-T. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. From the Gotham Podcast Studio, episode 98 of the Ain't Hard to Tell Podcast, Dexter Henry, Brian Fonseca in the building. What up? Navate's complaining in our fantasy league. <laughs> Everybody complains in our fantasy league, except for me. You know why I don't complain? Because I'm, I'm going to win. I, co- I complain. I, I haven't complained either. Well, I mean, you know, we're co-commissioners, but like. <laughs> I'm not complaining because I'm going to win. I'm like, yo, come on, man. Come on, man. All right, we'll talk. We'll talk about those. We've, complaints we've, later. you know, we've been away for a little bit, but we're back now. We are back. We're back. Um, um, episode ninety-eight. I'm really looking forward to this one because there's a lot. There's a lot to get into here. A lot to get into. Yes. A, a lot. You know, we, it's a, look. We we took a break. Sometimes we need some load management, right? <laughs> life life comes at you fast. Right. You need some load management. That's a big topic in the NBA. Everybody <laughs> is worried about this load management stuff. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off by this. I think people are. I think people care too much about this in a way that I actually don't. I just don't like the term. Why? Can we call it something else? Why? Because load management. You want to manage your load? <laughs> <laughs> you're so, but you you're see so why childish. that's funny. Yes, I am childish. But yes. you see why that's funny. Can we call it something else? Like, did you not? Did you hear of Charles Barkley and Shaq just like making fun of the name the other day? And I'm like, no. yeah, these are the same jokes I've been making. So they're childish too. They are. <laughs> I, it just happened to be on TNT. Yeah. Look, I, look, I, I don't, I don't have a problem with the term. Load the term management. is so stupid. Is it? Can we just call it rest? When you work, I mean, you could. We can't call it like work management, workload management. Yeah, but it's just shorting. It's a shorter is better. <laughs> Instead of saying workload, now you say load. Shorter is not always better when it, prob- comes, you, when it comes to so, loads. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> You see, your problem is you have an issue with the word load. You can tell I've been waiting to come back. Yeah, you have been. Pause. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Yeah, I'm a kid. You ha- Yes, clearly. <laughs> clearly. But it's just, you know. You have every- an issue with the word load. That's a problem. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, like, lo- load management. Do we really need to break this down? We don't need to break that. No, it's not. not the, it's not the term. I, I think most. Well, I'm I think most NBA fans of this podcast understand what load management is. But what it is to break it down in simplest terms is, as Ryan said, it's really rest. rest. It's just rest. It's resting players. Rest is actually sure, a more efficient way to say to it. Make sure that they are not worn down by the time it comes to the postseason, or they can manage injuries. Yeah, the NBA basically admitting that the season's too long, and but they have. Yeah, here's the thing. But they don't want to cut it down because you know money. Oh, yeah. And then, like I say, well, the owners are not going to want that. They don't want to lose the home dates and the right. revenue they can get. The answer to most questions in life are money. That's yes. what I always say. So, so <laughs> the reason people are this has now become a huge topic of discussion. Pause. The NBA. Why am I pausing no, man, that? Why? Man, Why? Huge. It's a huge topic of discussion. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> let me look. Let me talk. Let me look. Let me say something really clear. I don't care about. You know what? The older I get, the more I'm less. Concerned I know, but about I'm not. I, <laughs> I don't. Care. I'm not in my. 30s you know why? Because I'm comfortable That's in why my this sexuality. Funny to me. So am I. But you have a problem with the word load. No, it's just funny. It's is it? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. We just have different... Maybe I'm past the age where I don't find Probably. It yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, still there. Okay. I'm knee deep into this. Load. Ha ha. Huge. Ha ha. Pause. Ha ha. All right. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Anyway, the NBA, uh, why everybody's all up in arms? Because the Clippers were managing Kawhi Leonard's load. load. That makes Brian so uncomfortable. <laughs> no, you should see his face. <laughs> He's so uncomfortable. No, because you looked at me like you were expecting me to laugh. And if you're going to look. I know that you would laugh. I'm a man that fulfills expectations. Right. So, okay, you know. That sentence could have went a different way. <laughs> um, so Kawhi has been resting. Well, here's my thing about the Kawhi thing. Yeah. We saw this last year in Toronto with Kawhi. Kawhi would play not playing back-to-backs, right? Yeah. The real issue, to bring it back to what you said, is about the money. 
right? When this becomes a concern is when Kawhi doesn't play in back-to-backs on national TV. And then people will get concerned, oh, we don't get to see him. So this past week before we were recording this, the Clippers played the Bucks in L.A. You did not get to see Kawhi versus Giannis. Yeah. So people were disappointed. Look. Does it suck for the NBA fan? Sure. Does it suck for the NBA fan buying the ticket? Yes. Does it suck for the national TV audience? Yes. But then here's my thing. Thing. All of y'all. The Caribbean came out and you. Yeah, Ting came out. <laughs> here's my thing. All of y'all knew last year, and this is the NBA schedule makers and the national TV schedule makers, you knew last year Kawhi wasn't playing in back-to-backs. So why did you schedule a back-to-back where he's on national TV? Huh? Mm, I think here's the thing. Maybe though. maybe let's not do that. How I about think, that? But I also think maybe yes, I don't disagree with that. But what I will also say is maybe he should sit out the second game at I think it was Portland. No, it was home against Portland. Maybe sit out that one instead of passing up on a chance to play against Giannis. Like we would like to see Kawhi versus Giannis just me, from a just from a competitor standpoint. Let me let me. But I don't know how Kawhi felt before the Bucks game. Maybe the, he was like, "Yo, this is the game I need to rest more than the second game." I guess, but coincidentally, he did that to you know the other back to back too. I forget which one it was, but it was also nationally televised. He set out that one and then played the, the following. I'd have to look at how many games he played before that back to back. Again, I don't know how he's feeling. I feel uncomfortable telling another player how they should feel and when they should rest. I, I'm not cool I, with that. I have mixed feelings about this because I hear some people where they say that uh, older players, that being I wish there was low management back in the day, and I hear other players saying that you get paid to play 82 games, both of which I think it could be true, right? Like I think you should you should probably, you know, you get paid to play basketball. See, I see. I, here's why I don't agree with that. This, is, this also goes to other jobs and other professions. Which is a problem in this country. Yeah. People also need mental health days. I right? agree. How do I know part of load management isn't just physical? Sometimes it's also mental. And we should also consider that. The way at work, we need mental health days. But in this country, we are so focused on work, 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 work. Yeah. You get paid to do this. So you should show up and work. Basically, forget your body. Forget your mind. You should go out there and produce. I agree with that. I, but I, I'm, I'm also saying that the I, I don't know what the answer is here, right? So we have... For example, with R.J. Barrett, who's on the other side of this, where yes. the Knicks, you could argue that maybe they're overplaying him. But he's playing a ton of minutes. He played 41 in a blowout uh, not too long ago. He's That average. I didn't like. Playing him in a blowout, I think, was a little – that I think you don't need to do. And Damon Stoudemire is someone who came to David Fisdale's defense and said that, hey, you know, I played, f- whatever, 40 minutes a game – you know, for multiple seasons. He said, I averaged 40 minutes as a rookie, and he, rookie. He's three years younger than I was. Ended up playing 13 years. He'll be fine. Latrell Sprewell, and this is who uh, David Fisdell brought up, Latrell Sprewell, when he said he played 42 minutes of the game one season. He actually played 43 minutes per game one season. And I think he had a couple others that were 40-plus. I know Anthony Mason did that. He led the league in minutes, I think, back-to-back seasons. Um, I, mean, I, like, I, mean, I don't know what the answer is here. I don't. See, the answer, but I think, but to go back to yes. Kawhi, and this is something that I brought up in one of our group chats because we have more than one. I said, if Kawhi is doing the whole sitting and back-to-back things, that tells me that there is probably some sort of chronic knee injury or whatever it is there. That's some sort of lingering injury that he can't that he can play, but he can't overwork himself, overexert himself in the back-to-backs where he's going to play, what, roughly 35 minutes each or so, maybe even 37 to 38. And then come to find out that's sort of what it is here. Yes, and then we also have to look at last year. Because this is my thing with last year. Kawhi and Raptors did load management. And, hey, guess what happened? They won a title. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it worked out for the team who was to make you uncomfortable managing his load? Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. It worked out for them, yeah. right? So why are we not giving Kawhi the benefit of the doubt that he knows his body, knows what to do, and knows how this is going to work? Because, yes, I get it. It doesn't. It's not good for the people that – it sucks for the people that showed up and bought a ticket and expected to see Kawhi And, and again, I think it's but also – But they'll be all right. Life I think, will go on. I think it's also when he's sitting out. I think that's what people have they'll to They'll be okay. I think that's what it is too. Y'all will be okay. It sucks. You know what? Sometimes you – look, man, sometimes you buy a ticket for a baseball game and the starting pitcher gets scratched and you really want to see him pitch. Your life is fine. Buyer It'll be, go on. Buyer beware. It's always buyer beware. Yeah. But I, so stop acting. So, so folks, stop acting like you're entitled to get something that you paid the ticket for. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, like a lot of times you feel like you buy a ticket and you expect your team to go and play hard, and then they play like the Dicks have for most of this season. 
sometimes you don't get what you want. Yeah. That that that's what happens. Sometimes it doesn't work out like that. I am not I am not I think the bigger issue, which I am a huge proponent of, we worry too much about the guys being managed here at the NBA. We don't worry enough about the kids being managed when they're playing four and five games at the AAU level. Yes. That to me is a major part of the problem. If you compare it to back in the day, the we, the reason I think guys were able to play longer is a lot of those guys weren't playing as many AAU games. Yes. You have to wonder some of the issues that Kawhi has, some of the issues that some of these other players have, is it because of all the games they played while on the AAU circuit? I think that has to be it. And I think well, this is a theory that me and my brother have sort of talked about where it comes to not even just basketball but baseball. A lot of these dudes getting Tommy John surgeries now. Every year there are a handful of pitchers who get Tommy John surgery, and they're getting this surgery by the time they're 25, 30 years old. Why? Probably because they're pitching on the travel team level, AAU level, whatever it is in baseball. And they're from 12, 13, 14, they're throwing a ton of pitches, probably already throwing curveballs, which isn't great for your arm at such nope. a young age and things like that. I think the same thing could be said for basketball and why we're seeing now so many torn ACLs yep. and all these significant injuries to dudes who are 25, 26, 27. A lot of times 18, 19. We've seen it at the college level a lot now too. I think that's what it is because I, I'll go on Instagram in September and I'm looking at dudes play basketball on and like inside. And this is like an AAU setup where they have all these showcases because people are, again, profiting off of these kids. And that's a whole nother discussion for another day. And they're day. selling parents on the idea that if they get so much more of this competition. And exposure. That it's going to, and exposure. It's going to make them better when there's actually studies proven and in other countries that that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. But this culture of America and capital, capitalism is about making money and profiting. Youth sports is a huge market. Yeah. In America, HBO Sports has done some really good pieces on this, including with baseball and travel baseball. And they also did this thing where they were talking about sports. I think it was in Norway and how they have had, like, some of the top Winter Olympic athletes. But their whole thing is not about overplaying their athletes or having all these – they don't even have, like, travel teams and stuff. I don't remember if it was Norway or the Netherlands. I could be wrong. But, like, it, the whole point was they don't overwork their kids, right? Like, they're all kind of involved in sports, but it's yeah. not like – they don't do stuff that's too competitive. Yeah. Play. I've been, to, and I'm speaking from experience, I've covered AAU events. Same. Heavily. Same. All day things where teams are sometimes playing three to four games in a day. In a day, I've yes. seen girls basketball, boys basketball. I've been to five-star basketball camp. I, I've been to all this stuff. Yeah. I've seen it. When you kind of think about it, and you think I've played basketball and stuff where you play three and four games in a day. Yeah. And I've been super sore the next day. But, you know, you're young, you bounce back. It's not like me trying to – I can't even try to do that now. Right. It's not. It's probably not good for your knees. Probably not good for the rest of your body. You mentioned some of the stuff we're seeing, ACLs, same thing with pitching. I have to strongly believe I don't have solid proof on this. But it can't be good for your body at that age. And so it, – Miles wear up. Miles pile up. So what I don't understand so. is when you're investing millions of dollars in these guys as some of these owners are doing – Right? It also affects your TV deal and everything. Yeah, maybe we should make the season shorter, which I'm a fan of. Yeah. Maybe we also should understand that managing these guys and their bodies is best for them and best for the productivity as a game. Kawhi Leonard, we talked about last year, right? He got his minutes managed. We saw in the conference finals that he was clearly hurt. He was kind of yeah. limping around That's on one leg. Too. Yeah. There could be a case to be made that. If he wasn't managed early in the season, maybe he wouldn't have been made it through the finals. Maybe he would have had a, a worse injury like we saw with Kevin Durant or Klay Thompson. Yeah. Maybe you wouldn't have been able to play. He was clearly hopping around on one leg, and it could have been worse. And he and if he didn't make the miracle shot, they would have been out against Philly. That's true. So there's also that, right? And, and just this whole thing plays into just America's grind culture because we have that here, whereas, you know, in Europe they actually take vacations and things like that. Everybody here, you know, they, they go on Instagram, and this happens in this country a lot. They go on Instagram, they see people like The Rock and Kevin Hart. They're up at the gym at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. You hear stories about Jimmy Butler getting up and working out at 3.30 a.m. and things like that. And people obviously, you know, some people just want to get to that level, right? So what do they want to do? The whole thing in America is people want to outwork the next person so then how do they do that they get to the kids early on and the kids are thinking the same way 16 14 years old this kid's doing this so i'm gonna do this and back when we were kids in your generation and even in my generation we were playing multiple sports 
a lot of these kids are just playing basketball 12 months of the year, and that's not good either. That's like, another you thing. You have because, to play yep. other sports. I grew up, I was playing baseball, I played football at one point, running track, doing cross country, and playing basketball. And a lot of kids from my generation, we were all multi-sport athletes. The science behind that is that your your body then is putting pr- pressure on certain muscles that you're consistently using over and over, and joints, over and over in playing that one sport. When you play different sports, you tend to, you, some of, some of, there's some overlap, but you tend to use different muscles in different ways that actually is, some research has shown is better for your body. Yeah. So kids from back in the day, what they were doing was if you were a basketball player, for example, you're playing during your high school season, you play summer AAU, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, you're playing other sports. Now, maybe you play tennis in the spring, maybe you play baseball or track. Usually, now track. coaches don't want you to do that. Your AAU coaches don't want you to do that. Yeah. It's all about specialization. Yeah. And I don't, I'm, I that, necessarily that, I don't, don't like think that's that good either. for the kids. I think you mostly, you. Be a multi-sport athlete. Like, but we've lost that, too. The money behind youth sports has sold that specialization, and parents generally buy into it because they so badly want their kids to be stars. And that's why they only force them to play one sport. Yep. Because, again, they also want to just outwork each other in that one sport. Think about it. If I'm a high-level basketball player and I have you know friends that don't really play basketball like that, but they want me to run track with them in the spring, I might want to, but then... I'm like, you know, maybe I'm not a top 100 recruit and some of these other guys that I know I'm better than them, they are, and they play AAU and do all this stuff. So, no, nah, I'm not going to run track. Except Instead, in the spring, I'm going to go play more basketball, be on tournaments, this, this, and that. And you even hear things about some of these kids when they're younger getting injured in high school. Yeah, but the weird thing is I'm always concerned is I don't even understand why people believe that because we're almost acting as though we haven't seen people who have been really good at more than one sport. Right. right. Or people who have been like really amazing athletes in like multiple competitions. If you take track and if you look at somebody like a Jesse Owens, right? Yeah. Or you look at athletes like a Jim Brown who was like uh, Or even more recently, Marquise Goodwin, who right. is a NFL wide receiver who is world class in track. Track. Right. <laughs> this can happen. This can occur. It's also good to test your body in different ways, just athletically, right? Even when you work out and go to go into the gym, it's good to vary your routines and yeah. what you do and try to challenge your different muscle groups to do different things, not to get too sports science. No, but either. every few months but, you want to change up your routine. Yeah, you need to do these things. This, it's, which it's is basically stimulation of the muscle. Even athletes themselves who are playing one professional sport Mm -hmm. will try to find things to do in the off season, whether it's doing some yoga, doing some boxing, doing swimming. Yeah. We've seen other athletes do this. So the fact that people sell this on the youth level. Yeah. Sounds like a scam. But the th- and the problem is it messes everything up. Because my, my generation was probably the last generation before Instagram really got famous, right? And that is a big thing with all of these kids is they're just – you go on Instagram, you're, see- you're a high school basketball player, your season's probably over in March, right? Your season's probably over in March. If your team was really bad like mine, your season was over in February. And I by the going to say November. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funnier, actually. <laughs> but by the end of by the end of March, you're just ch- you go on Instagram and it's like, oh man, there's AAU tournament, ISA is starting, this is starting, Adidas Gauntlet's coming here, boom, 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 and then all of a sudden everybody's back into it. I- so think about it: if you're playing in your high school basketball season, twenty to twenty five games a year, right? Well, maybe more now with showcases. It's almost yep. like a college schedule, and some of these schools travel. Right, you have high schools yep. even from New York City that they travel to Florida during the winter breaks. Yes, yep. to to have these high level tournaments that was not happening before. No, not when it I was, played high school. Not even school. when I was playing high yeah. school. The, maybe they go to Jersey. That was it. Yeah, we went to the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> that was as far as we would go. And then on top of that, in the AAU circuit, that's another what twenty five, thirty games. Yep. And then in between that, you have two hour, three hour workout sessions because you're working out with all these trainers, so to speak. And that's a whole other thing. Let's not even Instagram talk to some trainers. kids who have in- individual workouts. Too. Yeah. So Crazy. you're you're talking about you could be talking about fifty games a year minimum with some of these kids. And how many hours a week are you putting into this? It's 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 insane. But that's the culture we're in. And I think we forget. That we've overworked some of these kids, some of these guys who are now playing in the NBA, the stars. Of the NBA, this is where they come of, from. From come out of the AAU yeah. culture, and maybe we need to look up at the culture and the way we are handling sports with our kids and their bodies before we get so mad at the athletes now, like Kawhi Leonard, who's in his prime, and saying, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! I might have something going on with me. I might need to slow this down." I support Kawhi Leonard for doing what's best for him. I understand it hurts the overall product of the NBA, but you know what? 
figure it out. Reduce those games. Yeah. Your, you, the number one thing for you guys should be to make your product the best that it is. People say they want to see a good product on the court. A lot of people also say they, they don't care about the NBA regular season. All this doesn't matter. So why y'all complaining? Because you missed one November game between That's true, Giannis so. That's a good point and Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Because people say the regular season doesn't matter, then, you know, why they care about this. Especially this early into the season. Backpack Broadcasting continues to bring you the best original sports content. But now, you can get more of the content you love. For as little as $3 a month, you can get access to bonus content, including behind-the-scenes footage and interviews from the Sports Walk, Sideline Stories, or the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. All this exclusive content comes via Patreon. There are tiered levels of patronage, and each Backpack Broadcasting patron receives exclusive perks. Your support helps Backpack Broadcasting create more of the original content that you love. Visit Backpack Broadcasting's Patreon page and become a patron today. NBA season thoughts so far. Early, a lot of teams have played about uh, eight to nine games. Eight to nine, yeah. Roughly, Ten, we've seen that, right? Eight, eight, eight to nine games, roughly. Um, I think it's been an interesting start to the season. I know one team that Brian is hyped about. Oh, yes. They're hot. Yes. They're playing well. They are in the East. Yes. It is the team that excites him the most. When you mention this team's name, he'll just smile. <laughs> Because they, you know why? Because you know this team is the Brian yes. Fonseca All Stars. This, this is this is if I could construct an ideal just NBA team. <laughs> they right? got guys who are short. It, they M- got guys <laughs> who are scrappy. They got guys who are looked over in the draft. Yo, some undrafted. None of them are lottery picks outside of maybe two dudes. So Brian loves this. Three dudes. They scrap. They fight. They like violence. Like Brian, they'll get in your face. This is the Miami Heat. Yes. They have a culture. And here's the thing. As far as the grind culture things that we were talking about before, this applies to the Miami Heat, but they don't do it in a way where dudes are overworking themselves. And right, just, right, right, right. Right. So it's a little bit different. We're not also saying to work hard. And the reason why I like this organization is because they pride themselves on that hard work and because they have dudes like Jimmy Butler, who was the 30th overall pick from a junior college out of Marquette. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't somebody who was a one-and-done, first overall, all mm-hmm. the talent in the world. I don't even know where Jimmy Butler played AAU basketball. I don't even know if, if he played AAU basketball because sure he, he went to junior college. You know what I, I mean? From from Tom Ball, Tom Ball, Texas. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are the kind of things that I, as a basketball consumer, and me being who I am, I can gravitate towards Oh, oh, oh gravitate? <laughs> you are fully immersed in the Miami Heat. Kendrick Nunn was a undrafted rookie and is like 24 years old now. And, well, he had an issue in college that caused him to transfer from Illinois to Oakland. But In Detroit, that is. Yes. Oh, yeah, Oakland University. But very good NBA start so far. It's gone cold the last few games. Very good NBA star. Tyler Hero. Now, I know he's one of these one-and-done dudes, and so is Bam Adebayo. But they're not one and done in the same way that Carl Anthony Towns and maybe Andrew No, no, Wiggins no. They, they were one and done and sort of overlooked at Kentucky. Yes. 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 Both of them. Yep. Because of the system. Tyler Hero, I told you, he's like, he looks like he looks like he's gonna be Devin Booker to me. That's what I see right now. Huh. I, I, I see Devin I, Booker I like comparisons. Him. I do I've like heard him. that the Heat think that he's gonna be like Clay Thompson. I'm not sure about that because defensively he's not that. He tries on defense though. He's not somebody who just doesn't and Look, the, the Miami you, Heat will I, get you to try. See, that's, but that's the thing. The Miami Heat also gets you to play yes. defense. If there's somebody I believe they can turn into a good defender, if you play for an organization, it's the Miami Heat. I'm not anti-big business, but I appreciate the way certain organizations operate, and I don't like the way certain other organizations operate. I don't, yeah. like, I don't like when organizations have an arrogance about them unless it's sort of earned and unless players sort of swear by it. That Miami Heat culture is something that's not for everybody, but it's something that a lot of players who are really immersed in, they can get themselves on board with. And you look at you That's look the at, company you, you would want to work you at. You look at the players <laughs> that have played for the Heat and the great players that have played for the Heat and the way they talk about it, whether it's Alonzo Mourning, yes. Tim Hardaway, and as I, this is somebody who I couldn't stand the Heat growing up, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Especially after Pat Riley, who I, I have a, a, a affection for Pat Riley for what he did for People the Knicks. People from my generation culture, grew up with and the culture Le- LeBron he, on that team. Yeah. 
the culture that he built around that team, Dwayne Wade, all those guys come back and speak well. So it's not a shock to me that one Marquette guy in Dwayne Wade, who was a four-year player that got overlooked before he killed uh, he killed uh, Pitt in the uh, yeah. tournament years ago, yeah. does not – I'm not overlooked at that at all whatsoever. And him doing that and then another Marquette guy, Jimmy Butler, coming in is a hardworking guy that may have been overlooked. But the Heat are looking good. They're sitting third in the East they're, right now. As we record, and record and this. last thing on the Heat, because we're going to get to other teams too. I still think that they're going to make a trade at some point. If they do make the trade, I think they can get to the Eastern Conference Finals. If they stay, if they stand pat, which I doubt they will, because they have so many expiring contracts, then they're probably a second round and done team. Because I get, because people think that I get carried away with it, and I'm like, no, no, no. My expectations are reasonable. I said before the season, probably 48 wins, which. You know, I don't feel like that was unreasonable. I think they're going to be top fourth in the East unless they make a significant trade, in which case it'll be third in the East. And I think they could take Milwaukee in a seven-game series. I don't know if I'd bet on it, but I think they could because I think that collection of role players is better than Milwaukee. I'm still way, I'm still way too early on seeing like who I'll put it be who. I'll put it to you this way. Giannis is obviously better than Jimmy Butler. Um, now, when you go from two to eight, their second-best player is Chris Middleton. Miami's... I mean, sometimes it's Goran Dragic, sometimes Bam out of bio. Bam out of bio is a starter, let's say him. Would it really surprise you if over the course of a seven-game series, Bam outplays Chris Middleton? Because it wouldn't surprise me. No, it wouldn't shock me. So I would, surprise, I, I would actually put my more, more of my money on Goran Dragic outplaying Chris Middleton. Yeah, so that, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like, I saw in the first game and Jimmy Butler wasn't even there. Giannis can get his. Giannis can get 41, 14, whatever it is. And then around that, I think Miami will muck it up enough but see, to where here's they can the win thing. that with series. You saying but again, that, they may look very different down the line. With you saying that, and I think about what's happened thus far in the NBA season, what is glaring to me with Milwaukee is, God, they miss Malcolm Brogdon. Brogdon. Yo, yo. And Malcolm Brogdon is balling. He finally had a subpar game last night. Yo. he. <laughs> I mean, one, he was their second best player last year during the playoff run. Yeah. And I was. And concer- now his usage rate is up. up. I was concerned about Indiana and how they would do until Oladipo came back. But Malcolm Brogdon has been yo, holding it down. Yo. Because there have been some <laughs> other losses there, but he's holding it down. I, we, we, we did some... Uh, Highlights the other day, and we were talking that night, and I did that Indiana, um, was it? Charlotte. Charlotte game. Charlotte's right? has been surprising. Charlotte has been surprising. They play hard. They I actually more, like watching I can't believe them. they have more wins than the Knicks. Um, <laughs> but Brogdon, they went to him down the stretch, and he was getting buckets Yo. with confidence. And Yo. this is against – so don't tell me Charlotte's oh, – okay, I've seen him do it against good competition. I've believed in this kid and he could play. I even wanted the Knicks to sign him if they could as a free agent signing because I thought he was that good. I think the Bucks are going to miss him unless Bledsoe steps up. We shall see. Uh, um, <laughs> but that that's not not to do. The Hornets have been surprising. The Hornets have four wins. They are four and four. Do I think that's going to hold up? No. No. But I don't think so. I like Devontae Graham. Who's looking better than Terry Rozier. <laughs> <laughs> I like P.J. Washington, who I actually covered at uh, Geico Nationals. Uh, when he played out here in Queens, I like um, who's the other Miles Bridges. I like him a lot. I think Miles Bridges is going to be pretty they, good. They, they have they, solid young. Players. They don't have. I They're don't not going to be very good. Though. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody there that's right now as a star. But like, if you have those guys around that look like they can be good role players, PJ Washington, as you said, Miles Bridges, Devontae Graham. If those guys can be role players and they can draft a star, Charlotte's not in bad shape. Malcolm Brogdon before he had 11 points and two assists yesterday. To start the season, these first eight games, I'm just going to go points assists. 22 and 11, 30 and 10, 15 and 11, 21 and 13, 25 and 6, 22, 7, 31, 8, 12, 13. <laughs> yeah. He's been balling. Oh, man. He's been balling. He's Gr- running the show. Granted, these haven't been against great teams, I understand. Detroit, Cleveland, Detroit again, Brooklyn, at Brooklyn. Uh, yep. Cleveland, Chicago, Charlotte, Washington. Detroit I don't care. Again. He's they, bo- why have they played Detroit three times already? In their, di- in their is division. So that is that's crazy. Three times in nine games. But still, listen, Malcolm Brogdon, he, if he can keep that up, he's an all-star. And they need that with Victor Oladipo they out. Go out. They, and Miles Turner is out. That's an important note. Miles yeah, Turner's that, out right He's now. out, too. So that that's another reason it's been impressive. Um, in the East, maybe not getting overlooked. I think a team has been kind of getting overlooked, although they had some injuries right before we recorded this. The Raptors have been playing good and looking like they did last year without Kawhi. I don't know if they're overlooked, though. 
I think they are, I think man. Boston's kind of overlooked right now. now. Boston, Boston's been playing really good. Your boy, Gordon Hayward. Your boy. <laughs> your boy, Gordon Hayward. Which but I, I like Gordon Hayward. He's a solid player. Yeah, but no, no, no. Gordon Hayward's looked good and efficient. Oh, com- yeah. Coming off of curls, he's taking very high percentage shots. He looks confident, and he's been passing the ball well also, too. Yeah. I, Boston, but look, I told I had what did I I had Boston. Kemba Walker's letting them do their thing. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. And Kyrie wasn't letting people do anything. Like, I, like, do you, like, do you think if you walked into the Boston Celtics locker room, yeah. he was like, yo, just a simple question. Like, yo, y'all happier this year? What do you think everybody's going to say to me? They're going to be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> They look at. I mean, winning makes you happier, right? I mean, look. I'm not gonna knock the Nets. They got to win against Portland after Their David Lillard scored sixty. Not good though. But but here's the thing though. Portland was on second of a back to back. They that's were. Why, that's why I'm not. That going was a crazy very entertaining game way. though. D- Lillard dropping sixty. Lillard dropping sixty. I saw the first the first jumper. He went around a screen. Kyrie actually played him pretty well. Uh, the center was it DeAndre Jordan. Yeah, I believe it was DeAndre Jordan came up. No, not DeAndre Jordan. He was out. Jared Allen. Jared Allen came up to pressure him. Damian Lillard is at an angle, probably 30 feet away from the basket, and he just rises up like nothing hits it. it all that game all that game proved to me was that he is better than Kyrie Irving, like I've Oh, but we, I've agreed with you on that. <laughs> right. I, I've, I've always agreed with you on that, and I've always thought that. Yeah. Like so if, that's... If, if I'm ranking point guards, it's going to be Curry 1, Lillard 2, Kyrie 3, and probably Kemba 4. Okay, good. Still, I'm still understood that Kyrie's better than Kemba. Um, but I've always said that, but I've always said I've always argued that the gap is very minuscule. You're a hater. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone else is. No, how about that? In the West, you want to know? You want to know my team that surprised me a little bit? Although I thought this would go well, but it's been a little bit surprising. No, I'm not going to say that. Every, we're going to get to them not, later. Not Phoenix? We're not gonna, no, we're going to get to them later. They surprised the hell out of me. <laughs> a lo- I had some people who thought this team could sneak into the playoffs. I wasn't sure. I oh, thought they'd compete, but I liked them. Boys. Yeah, your boys. Yeah, my guys. Team. My guys. The Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> Luka Doncic and Chris Dash. He's Zendis. averaging like 29, 10, and 8 or something Ooh. like that. <laughs> and the 10 is not assist. They're rebounds. <laughs> Yo. Even though, even though the Knicks got a good win o- over them, and it will play them again next week. This man right here across from me has Brandon Ingram and Luka Doncic on the same fantasy team. Drafted. <laughs> My drafting was so good. Who that was your first round pick? First pick overall? Oh, it was Curry? Curry, yeah. Oh. I'm fine. I can yeah, withstand but, it. But you're still... I'm good. He might have. He might be out for the season. That's fine. I can withstand that. Listen to that. I, listen to that you know confidence. Why? You know why? Listen to that confidence. Because <laughs> I one, I'm 2-0, oh, about to be 3-0. and oh. I am a same. great drafter. When do I play you? I don't know, but you're gonna lose. <laughs> my team, yo, my team is the highest scoring team right now. Lose. It's early, That's fine. but still. That's fine. We my get, team is solid. Look, 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 I'm gonna change my team name to this. We get stops. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is no justice, no peace until I drop Justice Wins, though. That might be coming. Oh man. <laughs> um Dallas Mavericks. The, here's the thing about the Dallas Mavericks. Donkic has been crazy, like you said. KP's been up and down. Some games looks good, some games he Me has against not. you next week. <laughs> So this week from when we're listening to the podcast, Woo, can't it's going to be good. I can't wait to come on. It's going to be good. Somebody's going to be mad when we record the next podcast. <laughs> Luka Doncic <laughs> versus Kemba Walker. There we go. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks supporting cast, though. Yo. That's what's been surprising, Maxie right? Maxie Kleber has been very good. Maxie Kleber has been good. Dorian Finney-Smith Dorian has Finney been Smith. solid. Tim Hardaway has been solid in, in minutes. Uh, Barea, when he's had to come on and play my stuff. My boy. In Your boy. J.J. Barea. Puerto Rico. He's back. He, um, he's back. And, yo, he was cooking the other game. Dwight Powell's Dwight back. Dwight Powell's back, also been very good. Yes. The supporting cast, because that was my thing. I, was like, I think they're going to make the playoffs. I, I think so, too, now. I'm actually surprised that Porzingis hasn't rested yet. I'm sure that'll come. At I think some they point. will, and I think that's what you're seeing in some of these games. I think the the, the conditioning's still not there, and he still has to learn his rhythm with Doncic. But it's gonna come. I'm, he, he looks, those two he looks guys, good in that role. I, yeah. I'm a little concerned with the obviously the lack of rebounding, and just sometimes I feel like he relies on his jumper a little too much. Too much, especially against smaller guys. Yes, he's gotta he's got to get more in the post. But people gotta remember he's still young. He's still figuring out with Doncic. I think the two of them complement each other skill set wise extremely well. I was telling y'all, Luke is and, so good. And the more and more <laughs> Knicks fans, how you feel about that pick that won't be high? Ugh, ooh, you know why? Because they're going to be good. What isn't that pick protected? What was the protection? I don't remember. The Knicks are going to get it now for sure. Well, yeah. But here's the thing. Uh, I don't. I guess we'll get into the Knicks at some point. But I don't want to like get in them too early because I know we got to wrap up with Dallas and the Western Conference. 
That pick might not be terrible if you can package it depending on where the first pick is. But yeah, they have to also. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's we'll, a lot to get into. There's a lot to get into with with that. Um, but Dallas, I think Dallas is gonna. I think they're gonna make the. Playoffs. I think they are too. <laughs> Uh, Sacramento's you, disappointing the hell out of me. They're one of my most disappointing teams. Yeah, they have no, they have no Bagley. They're one of my most disappointing teams, um, man. The Pelicans, I would not say disappointing. It just sucks they have no Zion. Favors is they're still out. disappointing to me because I still thought they would be pretty all right without Zion. You know who hasn't been good for the Pelicans, and I just dropped him in fantasy. Mm-hmm. JJ Redick. Yo, he doesn't get minutes. He's not doing anything. I mean, he's thirty-five, right? Yeah, that's a, that could be a factor. I mean, you know, it's, 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 Brandon Ingram's been tremendous in that role. Ooh. Unfortunately, they haven't been as good. I thought Lonzo would be a little better, but again, he's struggling with injury. And now Holiday he's... hasn't really been that good. They're I thought I, Holiday is the one that I expected a lot more out of. Yeah. I thought he would average something like twenty-one and six. I think when they get back Favors and Zion, they might be okay. But they here's the thing about the West: this is what we're talking about. You can't dig yourself. You in can't that get deep off of to a home. slow start. This man. isn't the East where you might be able to come back and, and battle. But the team I know you were going to talk about before, the Phoenix Suns. Wow, the Suns Booker looks good. He's playing the best. He looks legit basketball. finally. He, he looks legit. You know why? Because he's finally got some competent role players around him. Kelly Oubre Jr. Has without been solid. without DeAndre Ayton. Without DeAndre Ayton, <laughs> and I'm, I'm intrigued to see how they work things in when he comes back from yeah, his he might suspension. Come off the bench. And, uh, Baines I probably is, will come bring him. Baines off the bench. has been fantastic for them. Yeah, you Celtics know, I missed that. I watched some of the game the other night against the Heat. Um, they've been good. If they could get some more out of Dario Saric, it would help them. Yeah. But that team looks confident. Frank Kaminsky's looked all right. Yeah. What? And the Kaminsky-Baines <laughs> pairings, when Kaminsky's coming off the bench and they're pairing him with Bain. I like it. Their, like, plus-minus numbers are really good. Frank Kaminsky stays Frank on the outside. Kaminsky? Baines can battle on the inside. Frank Kaminsky's doing a good job of stretching the floor, which is also useful for a guy like Devin Booker, who's actually a pretty solid so, passer, passer. Yeah. for a two-guard. Yeah, he's averaging so. about seven assists right now. Yeah, he was doing that last year, too. And, look. Signing that might go on the radio. I know we've kind of killed this guy. He doesn't shoot the ball that well. Mm-hmm. Rubio has been solid, oh. especially in pick and rolls with Devin Booker and what he's been able to do looking for him. So, yeah. th- look. I still don't trust him long term, though. But yeah, I think what do you, he only signed a two year deal, so I don't even think it was. Long-term. No, no, no. The entire team in terms of this year, may, like, I don't think this is going to. Would it, this shock, is one, this would it shock you if they were like the Kings of last year and they fall short of making the playoffs? That wouldn't shock Maybe. Me. Nah, nah. It wouldn't shock me because you're talking about a 40-ish win team. So, no. They'd be 500. That's good improvement. Roughly. And look, my, look credit That'd to be great for them because I, I had them maybe breaking 30 wins. Yeah. Monty Williams looks like, he, looked like he's well, that's a, the, a good Well, that's job. probably the main thing. And leading leading with the best record in the league right now, the Lakers, 7-1. and one. Defense looks good, which is something you and I said before the season. There were we thought the Lakers were going to be really good defensively. You both picked them to win, the, win it all. Yes. I know a lot of people on the Clippers. I do like the Clippers, but something about the Lakers, I think when they're able to go to their stars down the stretch, is going to matter. Yes. They can play LeBron and, and AD in a pick and roll. AD looks good. Dwight Howard LeBron looks, looks really good. good. But I said that. I said I thought it was one of the best <laughs> signings. I said that is probably one of the best value signings of the offseason. Yeah. Dwight Howard looks fantastic defensively. Yes. He's not doing too much. He's doing everything that's needed of him. I'm almost at this point where I'm like, why isn't he starting? He looks like a Hall of Famer past his prime, which is what you want. But that's what he that's, is. Though. That's exactly what you want, though. That's also like, what he you is. want him to look like that. Yeah. Because a Hall of Famer just past his prime, he could still, if you start him, he could still walk and get a double double in twenty something minutes a game. Yeah. He's yeah. that, and the way he's moving defensively, switching off on the guards, he looks so mobile and so nimble. I and love things it. Things like that, like he's he's great, man. I'm, I'm actually having fun watching him. Dwight too. Howard, man, repping for the DHs out there. We like that. <laughs> We like that. <laughs> we like that. So er, early NBA and thoughts. And now Kyle Kuzma's back. Yeah, I'm not, you know, early NBA thoughts. I'm not going to get into like our friends at the Seven Footers podcast. They talked about overreaction season. I'm not going too crazy with things. You know, I feel there's some observations. For you, what is that time period where you like to see where you're like, hey, this is where I feel like I think I know what a team is? Like, how many games is that for you? I always say that the season usually starts around Christmas. Oh, yeah, like I that, rock with that. That's when we start to 25, see. 25, 27-ish yeah, games. Yeah, by that time, you're getting closer to. You're getting, if you're, by Christmas, you're getting around 25 or so, and that's two months from when the season actually begins. Yeah. So you're talking about a healthy sample size, roughly a third of the season. So I think that's when we start to get to it. Because right now, we're still talking about 10% of the season. And a lot of the stuff that's going on now could easily go up in flames, like, Teams that start off six and three, if they go three and six, all of a sudden they're five hundred. Teams can go the other way. I still think that teams like Cleveland and Charlotte are going to sort of regress to where they should be. Um, 
I still I don't think I don't think the Knicks are going to be as bad as they've been so far. I'm I actually, don't think so either. I'm surprised. They also they also let's be not the record's not good two and seven as we record this, but they have been competitive in most games except for this week when they got blown out by Sacramento and then Detroit. But here's the thing: it's like well, we were also going with the expectation that Dennis Smith Jr. would be healthy and probably the starting point guard, if not Alfred Payton. And now they're both hurt. So now Frank Nilakina is playing, and yo, uh, uh, Frank Nilakina, uh, he. <laughs> yeah, I reach out to my man Scott Zoo about this. <laughs> That's why I'm like, uh, I'm like stutter here because like, yo, uh, let, I'm not gonna let, let's fourteen the... six four four three <laughs> against Dallas. He had a very nice game. The best He's like game one of the seen. hottest transaction trends in in fantasy right and I, now. And I, I'm still, I still need to see. What? I need to see it backed up. I want to see a little bit more consistency. But I have here's what I can say about him. It's very interesting when you watch a player and you're sort of you feel like you're watching the confidence grow. Yes. You're seeing in the way they're playing. I saw the aggressiveness. You see the aggressiveness. You see it on both ends of the ball and you're kinda of like, okay, I there might be something here. It's but here's we talk about this all the time. Brian, you and I talk about this all the time. Confidence matters, man. Yes. It matters in everything what, you do. What you matters But what matters more is patience. Just organizational I agree. patience. I right? agree. I started seeing this with Luke Kennard because Luke Kennard is another dude that's starting to turn the corner right now. And Luke Kennard is playing really well, and I think it's legitimate, right? We forget that these dudes are yar- largely 22, 23, 24, and in their third year. And from me growing up, I always understood it like the third year in football, in basketball, like that's when you want to see the, the, the jump, the development, the growth, right? We're seeing that with Luke Kennard. We're seeing that with Bam Adebayo right now. There are third-year guys that you want to see that jump from. We get too carried away with Donovan Mitchells and the guys who come right out of the gate like Ben – well, not Ben Simmons because he waited the year. But, right, but when point. he started playing, you know, guys or, that – Or Luca, like we're seeing right, now. Right, guys that come out of the gate just hot and just playing well right away. And we see Trey Young doing it the second half of his rookie year and carrying it over to the sophomore year. A lot of dudes, the standard should still be three years, especially since most of these rookies are on four-year deals, essentially two plus two, but four-year deals. And the Knicks, you know, the Knicks ended up picking up Neil Aquino's fourth-year option, yeah. which could look to be very good and valuable if he plays this way. The problem I think that you're alluding to is people always want this immediate return on their yeah, investment. Just wait. And sometimes you can be a little more. I've been preaching. Like, thank God R.J. Barrett got off to a slow start because they'd be killing him if he was averaging eight and four right now. A, a decent start, you mean, not a slow start. He didn't get off to a slow start. The, but, yeah. Right, right, right. But, that, that he get, that he's gotten off to a good start so yeah, far. Yeah, they'd be killing him. Sans, like, two games. But, and, again, he just turned 19 years old in June. You got to let him figure it out. <laughs> I, I like what I've seen out of R.J. Barrett. You were – I'm going to say this to Brian about early season because Brian was on this from way before the draft, uh, all the way before last year. He thought the Knicks should take R.J. Barrett. Uh, I was you, saying he'd be the number one overall pick I before was, the season started. Here's what's funny about it. We spoke about this on the phone a couple weeks ago. I was concerned about the shot selection. I've been very impressed with his shot selection, actually. Yes. I've been really, really impressed with the shot selection. He's actually been very efficient. He has shot the ball well. You can see how he picks his spots. He has this really good hesitation dribble and being able to attack and pick spots at the rim. Yeah. And when he does take the threes, which he's shooting – in the mid 40s, I think now yeah. from three point range, he's hitting them, which is hitting them pretty good. Now, I don't know if any of that is sustainable, but what I do think is a good sign is when you see a young player have the mental fortitude to be like, hey, this is where I need to pick my spots, especially when he's been putting the ball in his hands a lot, right? Like, he's not going crazy on this. He's not being J.R. Smith like on this and just jacking stuff. He's actually picking his spots. I've been impressed with that. His passing is better than I thought. We already knew he could rebound well for his position, mm-hmm. but if he stays with the efficiency, efficiency and plays within his game, my only blemish right now, my only I don't concern like, is the same, yes. the big concern is he's not hitting free throws. If you're going to have the ball in your hands, you've got to be able to knock down free throws. That concerns me. Yes. However, the kid, I think, has a good mental fortitude. I think he wants to get better. I think he will get better. I think Nick fans, just he's going to have growing pains. He's going to have games like he did against Dallas where he's 1 of 8, 1 of 9, whatever. Yeah. Happens. But I do think he's going to be fine. And early so far? Not even overreaction season, yeah. You looks like you were you looks like you were kind of spot on about dude. I and here's the thing, he's even surpassed my expectations so far because and you were higher on him, right? I was one of the highest on him that I could see because everyone was so focused on Zion that I was like, hey, uh, yo, RJ, pretty good. John Morant, you know what I'm saying? John uh, Morant looks good too, man. John, yeah. Yo, John well, Morant. he just had a bad game too the other night. These guys, gonna, but, rookies are gonna have bad games. They're look, look, that rookie of your conversation, uh, uh, John Morant, RJ Barrett. 
oh, that's it right now. Yeah. For people because they've played. That's it. That's Those it. are one and two. And, and I'm disappointed that um, Jared Culver hasn't gotten off to the start that I think he will. But, again, he's fine. He's a rookie. He's going to be good. People can't, you, like, you made a great point. You can't worry too much about that. But R.J. Barrett, I had him averaging, what, 15, 7, and 4 coming into the season. It's starting to look more like 18, 7, and 4. I mean, the ball's in his hands, and he's getting a lot of minutes. So he's so. he's getting he's getting more uses than I thought he would, and he's being even more efficient than I thought he would be. But I think again, I think he's going to be really good, and I think the Knicks have a future star. I think right now you have three core pieces, right? You have Julius Randle is going to be in your core because you signed him to that deal, and he started to play better last night. So that's at least encouraging. Not turning the ball. That's over at least encouraging much. for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Y'all at least have that. Uh, R.J. Barrett is definitely a core piece, and Mitchell Robinson was out right now with an injury. It's a game time decision for tonight as we're recording this. Uh, he's your other core piece. Everyone else, you got to kind of wait and see. Yep. Frank Nilakina, if he keeps the confidence, could be that, but we'll see. That's hey, enough. Maybe. All right. No overreaction this early in the NBA season. You know we like to hook our listeners up from time to time, and we have a hookup for you today. So for the listeners of the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. You can check out one of my favorite sports books, $40 Million Slaves, The Rise, Fall, and Redemption of the Black Athlete by William C. Roden. That's available on audible.com with hundreds of thousands of other books that you can listen to today. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com backslash A-H- T-T. Again, that's audibletrial.com backslash A-H-T-T for your free audiobook. Let's go over to the NCAA. Oh. Not caring about amateur athletes, as well, I like to, we like to call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what they do. Yeah. Um, Hope news, you guys got that one. News came out <laughs> right before... Uh, the uh the Memphis the Tigers yeah. uh were gonna play a game. Uh their freshman, James Wiseman, who's by many people projected to be number one pick in the twenty twenty NBA picks, draft. Yes. He uh still played despite being ruled ineligible by the NCAA earlier uh on uh that day. And then the school said in a statement that Penny Hardaway, now coach of the Memphis Tigers, mm-hmm. provided eleven thousand five hundred dollars to aid the Wiseman's family move to Memphis. Tennessee without the player's knowledge. The NCAA just deemed that Hardaway, a Memphis alum, was a booster at the time, according to the Wiseman attorney, Leslie Balin. Now, this happened when Penny Hardaway was not a coach of the Memphis Tigers and was coaching in the AAU circuit, right? Mm-hmm. And we know, look, man, this is where I want to stop on this. And right now, on uh we'll plug this but on another podcast on Bamani Jones's podcast the right time he's doing this really good series about booster culture which I found absolutely fascinating we know boosters have been giving money to these kids for quite some time people want to look the other way and act like it doesn't happen especially in college football but it absolutely does happen in college basketball that's it's, how Florida State just fired their coach it's no booster money yes <laughs> How do you, how do they pony up twenty million dollars right. to get rid of uh, what's my man's name? Willie Taggart. Willie Taggart, right? yes. Willie Taggart. They got twenty million dollars to Willie buy Willie Taggart, him who is black. Yeah, we, that's a whole other story. We can get into it another time. Yeah, but I'm not getting get, not getting that. in the middle of his second year getting fired. Okay. Yes, the NCAA issued a statement and said the University of Memphis was notified that James Wiseman is likely ineligible. The university chose to play him. This is after he played mm-hmm. in this game. Um, their ninety-two to forty-six victory against Illinois Chicago. And he said, ultimately, he's responsible for ensuring his student athletes are eligible to play. Look, man, if you listen to this podcast, you know how we both feel about the NCAA yes. not caring about amateur athletes. Yes. They don't care about amateur athletes. So a booster, if you want to call Penny Hardaway that at the time, fine, whatever. Call him a booster. I don't look at that as a negative word. You want to call him a booster? He helped a family who didn't have the means to be able to move to Memphis so they could be closer if they if his kid went to play there because they wanted to maybe move to Memphis for whatever reason, to see their kid play. He hooked them up with some money. Yeah. $11,500 to help them move and uproot and change their life. Yeah. And we're mad at that? <laughs> like, like, what did the kid benefit in this way about that? Like, what? how did he really benefit? His moving, let me tell you, has anybody moved out of state before? Yo. <laughs> like, Moving costs a lot. Yeah, even in state. In state, it costs. Like yeah. moving costs. I've a- had friends move in New York City. You, City. you've moved yeah, before. Moved many, many before. <laughs> yeah, moving can cost some funds, and coming from out of state, 
that money could help cover that, right? Yeah. And eleven thousand five hundred is not really that much. Much money. I don't know Jonathan Wiseman's financial situation or his family's financial situation. Yeah. But I'm sure the eleven thousand five hundred helped them move yeah. to where he went to his final year of high school and then played in his AAU circuit and then obviously he stayed and now is going to play in Memphis and they could see their son play. Um, is he making a lot of money off of that? You just called it a lot of money. No. Is this kid profiting in some ex- extreme way? No. But he probably should be. We, we agree <laughs> on that. Here's what I have to say. I am sick of the not caring about amateur athletes' organization yeah. and their fraudulent behavior and their antiquated laws. Because that's what this is. It's, it's extremely antiquated. How You're telling me because of that this kid can't play a game? Right. That's basically what it is. They're, say, they're saying the that money he received helped it. the family move. <laughs> it's like they cut a check and was like, "Yo, do this so you can come and play here." Yeah. It had nothing to do with him play, playing in Memphis. Now, but this gets filed under improper benefits, air quotes. <laughs> <sighs> but this is why I don't get the people that defend the AC, the NCAA. Who are those people? <laughs> Who are those people? Like, remember when we were talking about Tim Tebow? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, him. I'm sorry, I forgot about him. You know, you know what? You know I didn't a- make any money off my jersey, but nor did I want to. <laughs> I don't believe him. We but don't then, believe but you. then it's, but then it's, it, there are things like this. There are things like this. You that know happen. who didn't make any money off of this? Jonathan Wiseman. Yeah. Like you think he made money off the eleven thousand five hundred dollars that has helped his family move to Memphis? No, it's not profitable. That that money didn't change his family's life. It just helped them move. It just reinforces what I think in terms of just top. Top flight athletes, especially with this Instagram culture, you don't really need the NCAA. You don't really need to play college basketball. <laughs> you really don't. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not mad at the kids who go the Darius Baisley or even the LaMelo Ball route of just going overseas. Or now they have the program where if you're a top flight pick like a James Wiseman, you could just go into the G League. But obviously, you know, he did that because Penny Hardaway is there and they have that relationship. What's interesting is Penny Hardaway got labeled a booster because he gave money to the school a, de- a decade ago. Right, Penny Hardaway, who's a Memphis alum, get a lot of alums give money to school all the time, yeah. even not for athletics. Right, like this happens all the time. I do think it's unfair. I do agree with Penny Hardaway in saying that the kid has did nothing wrong in taking money from his a former AAU coach to help him move. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. If AAU we're coach. at a point where we can't even allow people to be helped to be moved, like the problems with you. But we already know this about the NCAA. Bro, if I was a college athlete and you're my boy and we went out for food and you just paid for it, then then that would be like illegal in the NCAA, you know, the rule book fucking rule 104 E or whatever it is. Yo, can't help can't, can't <laughs> help somebody eat because the only people that should be eating is us. Yeah. That's the NCAA. And this is why this is why I didn't make a big deal when they said, "Oh, players could profit off their likeness." It just has to be Oh, fine print. It just has to be under the NCAA guideline. Whatever that means, and we know what that means. That means you can profit off your like. You can profit off your likeness if we allow it, and for us to allow it is going to take a lot. A lot, man. And just, that, just and that that that's where we are with then. All right, moving. Look, man, go to NAIA schools. Uh, <laughs> th- there really needs to be a revolution. I think against. I'm not. And when I say revolution, I mean in terms of people just acting like the NCAA doesn't have to be the way for them to get there where they want to go because they keep screwing over these athletes. Yeah. As I said, we call them not caring about amateur <clears throat> athletes, and. When we just you know what the problem is, we got to stop acting like it's amateur athletics because clearly, with all the money that's involved in the NCAA, it's not amateur athletics. Something was brought to my attention. I went out with my mentor uh, to eat about a little bit over a week ago, and we were talking about some stuff. And just you know, we just recently had a great podcast with our man Gerard Hector, and we had mm-hmm. Bomani Jones and Pablo Torre on this, where we talked about diversity in sports media, and we love the NBA. You know, we love the NBA here, but. There was a team that put out a sort of behind the scenes about what the people that work in their team, their their team photographer, videographer, social media poster. And um, let's just say everybody in this looked the same. The video had good intentions. Oh, the video had good intentions. Like the video was cool, but they were clearly telling on themselves. But you know what? I didn't even notice this until Jamel Hill pointed it out. Y'all don't even know what y'all just did. The tweet said, Y'all don't even know what y'all just revealed. Let me pull pull up this. And then I looked at the video again and I was like, Oh. She said, The awkward part is y'all don't even realize what you just exposed. (laughs) And 
it's called behind the scenes. But here's let me say this, and I don't want to. And then a lot of people point. This was with the Portland Trailblazers, and I don't feel like this has gotten enough media attention. I don't. This is why I wanted to speak on this here. I don't think it's gotten enough media attention. Mm. This is not just a Portland Trailblazers problem, people. It's an American problem, to be no, honest. Yeah. No, and, and, <laughs> and if we just put this in terms of sports media, right? Even if you want to tell me, oh, well, somebody, this is going to be the clapback. Well, man, Portland is 78% white. Yeah, man, I, you're right. It is 78%. People hire out of state. But you, not even out of state. You can't, even if you want to hire in Portland, you're telling me that out of all these positions you showed me, you couldn't find a person of color for one of these positions? You couldn't find a person of color that was a photographer, that was a videographer, that could manage social media? And it's not even just about simply finding a person of color. It's about, all right, what's your role? You're covering basketball, right? You're covering basketball where you're using certain slang, you know, you're saying certain things that might not belong to your culture, you're dipping into other people's culture, and... That that's where it sort of gets really yeah, messy. but but it also is you have to look at this in in the terms of the people who are doing the hiring, as we always say, and and we talked about this in the podcast we did on diversity and stuff, which is that hey, a lot of the people look like exactly like the people they hire, and they don't have to think about necessarily diversity in these places. You know how I know all this stuff? Because I've worked in places like this. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it where the people don't have to think about being diverse. I've seen stuff where... Uh, yeah, uh, so have I. <laughs> they've just, well, they'll just be like, oh, we're going to bring in another candidate. We're not even going to make our candidate pool as diverse as possible. Mm -hmm. These things happen all the time. So this is how you get to these places. And it is shocking that in 2019, when you look at this stuff and you're like, uh yeah, Portland Trailblazers media staff so white. Like there need no, I'm serious. The reason I say this should have more attention, I was glad Jamel Hill brought attention to it, is you've seen this sort of outrage in terms of other things for the media where people talked about the Oscars and people talked about the, you know, the Grammys and the, just the way things were presented and representation for that. Yeah. Representation for that. This needs to happen in sports media too. I agree. Where you're looking at some of you know, you're looking at some of these organizations and you're like Yo, are y'all even trying? Again, this I'm not coming down. You know down what the clapback usually is, though, right? From from the other side. Oh, hire the best person. <laughs> if you, it, what? Well, why is the best person always got to look like everybody else? Right. And and if you're the best, if you are just going for that, if the people are just going to have that idea, you can find qualified people of all backgrounds. of all backgrounds. The problem is y'all are being lazy. And you're not doing the work to look for people all backgrounds. So then, when you give me, like I said, when you give me the numbers about Portland's this and demographics, you should have want people from only one background in your organization. You shouldn't. Anyway. You, you should shouldn't have meetings where there's 15 people and everyone Everybody looks the same and is from the same and believes in the yes. same things. Like, no, you should look at that and be like, yo, this might not be cool here. Like the problem, the problem <laughs> is, y'all look around at the table and is like. This is cool. Oh yeah, I'm we got this. Here. We got this. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. We got this. No, and like literally, literally, what you're doing in those meetings at that moment is you're not letting somebody else. And it's you're not letting somebody else have a seat at the table. And it's important. Literally, it's important to bring attention to this because some other people just innocently don't even realize it. Here's the thing, right? Like that's I, that's the thing too. Like I don't want to overlook that. But also, that's but like it's not always cynical. Like oh, let's keep everybody. No, no, no. Out. no. Actually, like, some, sometimes I think. Or maybe even a lot of times, I think it's just, hey, you know, we, we this is how they were brought up. This is how there are people that go to school in certain parts of like Jersey, Oregon, Washington State, Philadelphia, uh, not Philadelphia, PA, where there's only white kids in the school. So this is how they're going to think. Just like there are some kids that grew up where you and I grew up and maybe it's a little different. They don't. They, right. To your point is that they're not forced to think about it. However, right. it's, it's not an excuse and it does not. It, it, it's, it's not. More That's the, why it's, it's important more to reason, educate it's them. It's more of the reason why people <laughs> like Jamel Hill should uh, bring attention to it. I'm actually kind of shocked that uh, – Portland Trailblazers still have this video up. Right? <laughs> like that, like that's the that's the thing about me. Like I'm kind of shocked I went, they still I, yo, have the video. When up. I went to look it up, I was like, "There's no way this is still on Twitter." And then I was like, "Wait, this is still up." <laughs> Which again tells you they don't think it's wrong. They don't. Or How they, do you think Damian Lillard feels or, about this? Or it's I don't know if they necessarily think it's wrong. They Damian Lillard raps. They, here's the thing: <laughs> they don't think that there'll be enough people. It, that follow them, especially from Trailblazers fans, where the city is 78% white, that'll care enough about this. Mm. That's what they're telling you. I don't think there'll be enough white people here in the city that'll care about it, even though Jamel Hill brought this to this attention. Things get overlooked for a reason. You. Yeah. Things get overlooked for a reason. That, so. That's that's the thing. Like, you don't have to show that you care I'll if you, you don't what. think anybody else is going to care. I'll tell you what, there's some other social media teams I want to see. <laughs>
What, Utah Jazz? <laughs> Boston Celtics. <laughs> no, no, no. Boston Celtics. You know what's funny? Boston Celtics and throughout their front office and stuff actually isn't like that, man. I know this for a fact. It's not. And they've, ha- they've had some other people. But, like, what I will say is – can't say it doesn't look or doesn't feel to me. It's different from Boston, but you love Boston. That's your favorite city in America. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't dislike Boston. You know, Josue is cool. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> can we get can we get our man Josue on the, on the Boston Celtics uh, digital media team? Add a mm. little flavor there. Mm. I'm just I'm, I'm plugging for my man Jose. I think. <laughs> wait, remember? Yo, remember he came on the podcast. Now that I'm in this rabbit hole, he came on the podcast. And he, you know he's a WEI now. What was the first thing I asked him? I was like, "Yo, how is it? How is it? Yeah, I do. I do remember." He's like, "Yo, what do you mean?" <laughs> and you like, you looked at him like, "You know, like, what you know I'm what I'm mean. talking about." <laughs> you know exactly what I mean. No, we just messing around. We just messing but, around but again. No, but you are, I always ask people of color, "How is it there? How are you oh, doing?" Oh, for real, I do that. I always ask. I that. do. That. I ask Erica, "How is it to zone all the time?" I was talking to her about that. <laughs> I was talking to her about that just last night. <laughs> Um, you know, like you got to check in on the homies. I got to check in because people be tripping. Yeah. People be tripping in the workplace. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's it for episode 98 of the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. Uh, we're going to go to numbers. Uh, we have a bunch of interesting lists for now. John Moran and Brandon Clark are out. Damn, I got to take Brandon or Clark out of one of my You're going to be okay, man. Stop worrying about your fantasy sports, Damn. daily fantasy sports. He's a junkie now, folks. Uh, numbers 98. I'll be winning, yo. 98. What, what do we got? 98. 98. And we got some, we got some, uh, we got, we, we're almost at a hundred. So, you know, things are, we'll, we'll, we'll have more on that very soon. Uh, Jason Collins, 98, Hamid Haddadi, Jesse Armstead, Casey Hampton, Robert Mathis, Greg Ellis, Anthony Pleasant, Brian Arakpo, cupcake owner, cupcake owner, <laughs> Connor Barwin and Linval Joseph. I gotta go with my man, Robert Mathis, man. Beast with Dwight Freeney. Yeah, I agree. Jesse Armstead, Jesse Armstead was close. I was a Jesse Armstead. Jesse fan Armstead too. was close to Brian Arakpo because dog, I traded for him in Madden one year. This dude, bro, yo, if you listen. don't ever take a number and not bring it back <laughs> to a video game reference, I will be impressed. <laughs> Every time it's got to come back to Madden or 2K and some trade for some Madden or 2K game years ago. Yeah, that's a big part of my life, even still. Look when I when I have down look when some people have downtime they go watch movies some other people they you know play with themselves I play video games <laughs> <laughs> like it is it is what it is that 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 actually that actually made me laugh it is some what people it is. play with themselves and take care of their load management all right bring that's it, it full for, circle bringing it full circle back if you were listening from the top you will understand that yes. that's it that's it for episode ninety eight of the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast please be sure to uh, support and subscribe us oh and before we go. Uh, just wanted to say, you know, we had been away for a while, uh, for the the pretty much almost a month since we had been back and really done a new episode. Um, for people who did not know, um, I was gone for the past month because my mom uh, was sick. She had lost her battle uh, and passed away with endometrial cancer. Mm. Uh, there were a lot of people who reached out on Twitter, Facebook, etc., for their support. Um, or stopped by, came to the funeral, and O'Brien was there to support me yep. uh, through the time. Just want to say I absolutely appreciated that. Um, this episode, I'm dedicating this one to my mom. She is always with me in spirit. For sure. Um, for sure. And we appreciate that. She was very proud of what I did here with the podcast and Brian as well, too. So, you know, just appreciate, appreciating that spirit. Um, I know a lot of people keep asking me how I am. I'm doing okay. I'm doing fine. It's just one day at a time. I know my mom's spirit's still with me, and I just use that energy to fuel me in everything that I do. So, you know, I'm in a, a good place about that, but we appreciated the time and you sticking with us and supporting us and, you know, being here and Brian being a good friend through that. So we appreciate all that. We thank you for that. We thank you for the continued support Morning. we will have with the A Hard to Tell podcast. As Brian said, a lot of good things coming up. Episode 98, we are moving towards 100, which Brian is all excited about. Yes. Uh, please continue to subscribe. We'll also have some holiday deals coming up with stuff at our T Public store. Mm. That'll be coming up soon. Be sure to uh, leave us a review or rating. That also helps us. Um, We'll have some other cool deals coming up around stuff with the podcast as we move into uh, the new year. So a lot of exciting things coming. Thank you for sticking with us and your support. Until next time for episode 98 of the A-Hotel Podcast, he's Brian Fonseca. I'm Dexter Henry. Yep. Next time, y'all. Peace.